welcome back to the lab. If you haven't met me before, my name is Liza, and I'll be navigating you through our Siemens Dimension EXL 200. Far too many words, so from here on out, we'll refer to it as either the Dimension or EXL. I'll quickly navigate you throughout this analyzer, and then I'll show you how to do some QC and patient testing. Start your left to right here. Start off with our touchscreen monitor and keyboard. In behind it, we have our thermal printer. Electrolytes get run over here through the IMT module. Heterogeneous amino assays and loci module is right next door. Coming to the front of the analyzer, we have our samples area. Here we have what we call segments. Some analyzers will call these racks. Same concept. And over here, we have reagent storage and QVAC creation. Down below, we have a series of pumps, wastes, and other solutions that the analyzer will need. I'll get you to come a little closer and let's open this up and take a look more in depth. Starting off first with our IMT or electrolyte module, allowing us to test our sodium, potassium, and chloride. From left to right, we've got our sample diluent, a salt bridge, standards B and A, and a flush solution. Underneath this cover is a combinative electrode, which we change every five days. Our methodology is indirect using potentiometry in this module. In behind, we have some tubing, which connects out to this beaker. Normally, these tubes are connected into these areas. However, our IMT region is not configured at this time. Hiding in the corner over here is an IMT port where our sample gets entered into the system and creates a 1 to 10 sample dilution for our electrolyte testing. Let's move right along to our neighbor, the HM and loci regions. Here is our heterogeneous amino assay module, or HM for short. It allows us to measure our low molecular weight analytes using a chromium-based amino assay. We start up up here with our reaction vessels the same ones used in the low side region. We have a wash wheel, an incubation wheel, and two wash probes. Our photometric sampler also supplies the sample to the heterogeneous immunoassay module. In behind this lives our low side region. It's going to be a little noisy. Let's take you in there quick. That's your loci arm. That'll pick up these reaction cups from in here. Loci stands for luminescent oxygen channeling immunoassay. It's an increased sensitivity and accuracy in comparison to the HM module. We test things like our troponins, TSHs, and FT4s with this module. All right. This is a lot to digest, so let's break it down for you. This cylindrical piece is our reagent tray, kept refrigerated. This system is our R1, or reagent 1 probe. This system is our R2, reagent 2 probe. Reagent 2 probe actually will bring the reagents over to our HM and loci module. There are four key components I want you to know in this area. That's our sample area, our sample probe, our reagent feeder, and our diaphragm for making our cuvettes on board. This region is very hot, and you could get burnt from it if you're not careful. Here the cuvettes are made with two pieces of film and they're stamped into shape. They're sealed once the reaction is done. Our reagent belt our sample area, where we put our segments, or racks, and our sample probe. You will be using two different types of segments, or racks. Our green segments have risers, allowing us to use these 12 by 75 tubes, or 3.5 mil SSTs, or 
you'll be using the tan segments with no risers. This allows us to use our 5mm SSTs. We do not keep caps on. Remember to remove them before starting the analyzer. In addition to 3.5mm SSTs in 12x75 tubes, the green segments will also hold sample cups. Sample cups are used for short samples, quality control material, and calibration material. It would be labeled and filled with the appropriate solution, the lid would snap on, and it would be placed in the area that it was programmed. Here we're showing it placed in C3. This is the main screen of our EXL, showing us the status of our analyzer, our sample probe, and our IMT module. Our segment wheel has six sections associated with it, represented by each of these boxes. The dashes would be replaced by the assigned letter of the segment when it scans it in. Here, these will pop up in yellow if there are any alerts regarding the sample, supplies, QC, or calibration. Run allows us to start the analyzer to test whatever you've programmed it to do. Home allows you to go directly to this page no matter where you are in the system functions. For the sake of your labs, you will be most focused on the top four options in your menu. Enter data, sample status, test results, and system prep. Enter data allows us to enter our QC and patients. Sample status to see the status of what you're running. Test results to look at your test results. And system prep which is where you may find inventory and process other types of maintenance. The important functions of our keyboard are our standard keyboard system, your F icons are here, exit allowing you to go back one page, alarm if it beeps at you, a hard stop in case there's an emergency, pause to put the analyzer in standby, reset after an alarm, and run. This run performs the same function as the run on the monitor. Let's get started on our daily maintenance. The system check should be already performed for you by the prep techs and you'll have a printout to show the students or to review for yourself. So let's go ahead and clean the sample area, empty the cuvette waste, and make sure our inventory is up to par for today's run. For the purpose of safety, our analyzer's maintenance is performed while the analyzer is in standby. You can see the status of the analyzer on the top left of the monitor. To pause the analyzer, we'll hit pause on the keyboard. Hitting pause turns the samplers off, and there will be no risk to cause injury during our maintenance. Let's lift the lids of the analyzer and clean the sample area. All that is needed is a cloth dampened with water to clean inside the segment wheel. The analyzer covers can be closed and we can empty the cuvette waste. The EXL also has two front opening doors, the left side containing fuses, pumps and waste receptacles for the HM module, as well as the wash solution for that region. The right side contains the receptacle for the cuvette waste, various detergents, and the roll of plastics used to make the cuvettes on board. To empty the cuvette waste, we would simply cut between 6 and 12 inches, hanging down from the analyzer, between two formed cuvettes. At the college, we may discard this into general waste. M3 
emptying the cuvette waste can be logged into the analyzer. From the home screen, we can press F4, System Prep. From here, we can go F8, Daily Maintenance, F7 for maintenance logs. Here, we can toggle with the Enter button, Yes or No, if we've changed or emptied out the cuvette waste. You could press F1 to store maintenance. I've already pressed F1 before. From here, we can unpause the analyzer, hitting the pause button once more. Hitting exit on the keyboard allows us to return one screen at a time, whereas hitting home brings you right to the home screen. Checking inventory is an easy process on the EXL. From the home screen, we'll go to F4, System Prep, F1, Inventory. Here, we can see the test method, the lot number, and how many tests remain on that cartridge. Adding a reagent cartridge is a simple process. Take your cartridge, keep your barcode to the right, and insert it into our Flex Auto Loader. It will scan the reagent automatically and put it into the reagent tray. Entering QC and a patient sample is very similar. From the home screen, we'll press F1, enter data. Position is based on what is on the segment. We'll use segment E and we're going to do position 1. We can hit enter to toggle down. Patient name can also be the QC name, QC1, liquid check, unassayed control, 1, Smith, John. I'm going to run a patient, so we'll stick with Smith, John. Sample number, this could either be the QC level or the accession number of your sample. For practice, we will be using the location as the birth date. Day, month, year. Pressing enter brings up our test menu. You can select whatever is on board. If you accidentally clicked one test too many times, you can hit the minus button and reselect. Exit closes the screen. You'll change the mode and correspondence to what you're running. A primary tube or a sample cup. We will not be using barcoded tubes at this facility. If you've used Cerner or other LIS, please turn your barcode away from the scanner or into the segment. Priority will also change depending upon what you're running. We will not be running QC, and it's not a stat. We'll just keep it at routine, and the fluid will keep as serum. If you are running QC, you could change it to whatever type of QC you're running. The QC123 is respective to the level of QC you're running. Hitting new sample will allow you to program your next sample, automatically placed in the same segment at the next position. If you're done programming, you can hit F3 load list. It'll tell you exactly how much sample you need in order to run the tests you've selected.
load your segment onto the segment wheel, ensuring the indentations on the side of the segment align with the pegs on the wheel. Once all the samples have been loaded and decapped, we can hit run, either on the keyboard or the monitor. That about sums up all the basic operations of the EXL. Thanks for taking along!